Brian, let's... Uh, Pick a few winners. Yeah, get stuck into <laughs> Saturday's racing and, and hopefully find a few winners. You've got a ride in the first race on Saturday. Yeah, cool survivor um, for Gordon Elliott and Jiggenstone. He was second in Cork in a very competitive novice hurdle. Stays very well and uh, I think he's a nice ride to pick up. Gordon's horse are running well, but it's a competitive race. It is, yeah. It's probably one of the most competitive of the grade ones. I've got to give a shout to We've All Been Caught, um, being an Englishman. I th and, I, and I think we d he deserves more credit than just saying, oh, well done for coming over. He's certainly got a chance here after running well and winning at Cheltenham. And then the horse that finished second that day has come out and won again. So uh, We've All Been Caught, I think, should, should be in with a strong chance for the English. Um, we'll move on to the second, another grade one, uh, the juvenile hurdle. Lossy mouth, obviously. Yeah, she's going to be hard beat. <laughs> she is, yeah. Willie is three quarters of the field in it, but um, Paul has picked her. She's done everything right, and bar a blip, she, you'd like to think she'll keep her winning streak up. And all roads to the to the Cheltenham Festival, you'd imagine? I'd imagine, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it'll be interesting to see who Paul picks, because they have blood destiny as well, mm -hmm. haven't they? So he hasn't showed up here, but he's got a very strong hand in it, hasn't he? He does, yeah. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't go against Lossie Mouse myself, myself. She's looked impressive, hasn't she, so far? There are a few short-priced favourites to go in across the weekend, but a competitive one is the Irish Arkle. Yeah, it's going to be one for the viewers to watch. I think it's going to be hectic, very fast run. Um, Willie has a strong hand, but a lot of, a lot of his have, are only having their second start over fences. Dysart, Dynamo, El Fabiolo, Flame Bear. They're coming from beginner's chases, and... Uh, this is going to test horses jumping here. And only I'm going to side with St. Roy. I think the race could fall into his hands a little bit. I'd imagine Mark Walsh will bide his time out the back and let the front runners go very hard. I'd imagine Dicer Dynamo and El Fabiolo will go hard from the front. And it could be a race that could the horses from behind could pick up the pieces. He's got the experience. He's had the two runs over fences. But obviously, you have to respect and appreciate it. But I think St. Roy here is slightly overpriced. Yeah, a bit of value uh, to be found in St. St. Roy. I'll stick with our man with the pints and <laughs> appreciate it. Um, I just find him a fascinating horse. His, his career from being a supreme winner to then having his troubles and coming back into a champion hurdle and, mm. and now over fences. Um, I think he's got to be the one to beat, but yeah, maybe short enough for a bet. And then the Irish Gold Cup, again, not really... Um, well, there's, there's, there's a short price favourite in Galloping here, yeah. isn't there? I was, I was looking through what he's done. It's... 15 lengths, 20 lengths, 13 lengths, 8 lengths that he's put between himself and the rest of the field. Do you think it's the same, same story? I think so. It's just it's better he's getting. And for me in Punchestown, it was the way he raced for the first half of the race. He, Paul Hounan went around with a loop in his rein. Last year he used to race a little bit exuberant. He was quite far going. And it was the first si sign to me that he's grown up and filled into a real horse. Mm -hmm. and I, look, the, I've read the article that Patrick seems to fancy Statler a little yeah. bit he's going to have to be very good to beat him. I can see Statler running a big race, but I just think Gallop and the Champs could be, and I hope I'm not proven wrong, as good as horse we are going to see in Ireland for quite a long time, and I'm looking forward to seeing him anyway. How do you get him beat, or if you're on a horse in this race? Is there I, any sort of tactic you'd try and employ? Because of the way he raced in Punchestown in the John Durkin, he was so idle behind the bridle, mm -hmm. it's hard to, to, to change things up. Last year he was a little bit forward going, you could rev him up a little bit, but he seems to this year just tick all the right boxes and uh, maybe Ken Boy will go off in front. Mm -hmm. he's a, he loves, he's great, a great uh, record around the track and uh, he could be one for, at a price maybe, to pick up the pieces. And you might be sticking with Galloping here, but if you could ride one horse in all these grade ones, of the day would be Gal from the Champs, yeah. He just looks to me very good. Very, very good. Well, that's all for Saturday's racing. Um, we'll have a drink and a, and a bite to eat now. What have we got here? This is bacon and cabbage. Um, this is your typical mammy's dinner. I sort of <laughs> treat it. Um, you have your pint of Guinness, your potatoes, your meat. This is proper soakage for a proper weekend's racing. Mammy's dinner, a pint of Guinness. Join us Sunday for Sunday's run through the card.